over exploitation, over use of the resource, it can have um, a negative environmental impact. And, and rather than, than looking at the, at the dollar aspect, we're looking at both the dollar aspect and at the same time enhancing and protecting the, the, the environment. Definitely a move in the right direction. The quality of the environment is a major concern. However, improvements and preventative actions have not matched the concern. Some say it's due to insufficient resources. The Dominica Conservation Association hopes to influence a new approach, particularly among the youth between the ages of 12 and 21, through a series of summer environmental tours. Those tours would expose the youth to different aspects of the ecosystem, the environment, and our different areas of nature interests. And so these tours, as educational as they are, would help the youth to begin to appreciate the value of those different locations, the sites, which normally we call tourist sites, and also for us to pinpoint specific aspects of uh, relative information, information of importance that would bring out the necessity for educating the children on those points of nature. The objective is to provide education, foster an understanding and responsibility towards the environment, including land, sea, normal and forest. Normal school curriculum, those topics are not covered. The second reason is that every year we kept a summer environmental camp for children. And so this is part of the opportunity to get the youth at that age to pick up very valuable information on the environment, on agroforestry, on the importance of keeping our environment intact so that they as a future generation can then move on to implement and put those practices into effect. Among the sites to be visited, the botanical gardens, the coastal marine environment, Archibald Tropical Research Center, Mr. Andrew Roy's farm at Girardel, among others. Tours will begin on August 8th, and interested persons can contact the Dominique Conservation Association at 54 Hillsborough Street, that's above Kiwis. The tours will run from August 8th to September the 2nd. We go to a commercial break, and we'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned. Some people take the business of flying and crawling insect control a lot more seriously than others. That's why these insecticides kill 90% of all household insects within 30 seconds. Shell talks, a better way to protect your home. Want a rinse juice from Diamond Dairy? Delicious and good with vitamin C. Orange juice, delicious, strengthening, nutritious, and it's so good for me from Diamond Dairy. Diamond Dairy orange juice, the drink you need, the taste you love. Oh. It's good for all our we added vitamin C, delicious orange juice from Diamond Dairy. Good health never tasted so great. This afternoon's conference on child abuse and child molestation is one effort at developing policies to save the children of our community. Someone has to care, and the death of Natya Joseph of Wesley was a strong wake-up call. Thousands of children all over the world, and included in Dominica included, are going through the private hell of being abused. Some will die like our little eight-year-old Natya. Others, they might be identified in time, and somebody might remove them from the situation and probably save them. But the majority of the children who are being abused are going to remain in that situation. And probably sometimes later on in their lives, because they've gotten older, they might be able to remove themselves physically from the abuse. 
that they had been suffering. But the sky, the emotional sky, will be there forever. These type of emotional skies end up in giving us a lot of citizens today who are maladjusted, who cannot make it in society, who are unproductive citizens. The conference also examined the changing role of the family as we knew it, and one youth representative puts it this what way. What it means is that the families have become more insular, more isolated, more nuclear in the typical Western fashion, and as such you have less of a support group of young persons, of children in the entire community, in the entire society. And you are faced with a situation where people don't really care about your child as, as it would have been in, in, in the earlier um, instances. Couple with that, we see a, a situation where more and more the males in the society, in the families, are becoming more onlookers than anything else. They are, they are providing less of that kind of stable role model and um, with that situation developing where you have males really as onlookers in the whole societal process and the family process, it really sets up a situation for abuse, sexual and otherwise. After sustaining a hamstring injury at the Francophone Games in Paris recently, Dominica's star athlete Jerome Romain is out with the youngsters in his hometown, Portsmouth, providing encouragement. I had a chance to talk to him and ask him about his injury. Yes, it's coming along pretty well. Uh, I've been seeing the, the physiotherapist in Rose One. She's doing a real good job. And, well, I'm using the, the natural cures of here, the seawater. And, and, well, I'm trying to get most of my work done on, on the beach, which is, I mean, a very good place to, to get a total power body workout. And it's, it's coming on real well. Hopefully I'll be ready for the Commonwealth Games later on in August, well, this month actually. The Commonwealth Games, scheduled for Victoria, British Columbia, run from the 18th to the 28th of August, and it's the next big event in line. Uh, right now my focus is on the Commonwealth Games, and well, I think uh, if everything goes well, I do have a chance of, of getting a medal, both probably in the long jump and the triple jump, and I'm really looking forward to that so I could relax and get back to school for the fall and start training and to look for a greater spring and indoor outdoor season next year, which is also the world championship here. And so I'm really looking forward for the Commonwealth Games to be over so I could relax and start over again, go back to the drawing board and look at the year gone by and see things I could improve on and in order to make a step further in the field of, of uh, triple jumping. and probably get a little more on the world scene. One source indicates that about seven to eight ath athletes should be representing Dominica in those games. Uh, let's hope that they bring back home the gold. We go to a commercial break and we'll take a look at some items from the region when we come back. Stay tuned. Keep on running. and energy. That's the goodness of Ovaltine. Keep on going. If you want to make the winning team, you got to drink your Ovaltine. Keep on winning. Okay, she's got one of Frankie's special dogs. And fries. Yeah. Steps to the booth. I can't believe it. She stops. Can't find it. Looking for the hinds. Can't find it anywhere. You can't. She looks over, sees it. She's coming over. Excuse me, um, I can't seem to find any hinds. You're kidding. Here, you can have some of mine. Hey. Find them hinds. It just doesn't taste the same without it. Now for a look at some items from the region. First off to Jamaica. The separate group of companies and its employees are at deadlock. Oliver Fagan reports. The separate group has refused to allow unionized workers to enter their premises. There was, however, at least one sign of life. After initial closed-door discussions at the Labor Ministry, streams of disgruntled workers flowed from the meeting room. 
Senator Roddy Spencer, representing the Boston Anti Industrial Trade Union, says management has behaved badly. They weren't available for discussion Thursday evening. They weren't available for discussion Friday. They are only available today. Now, as you can very well appreciate, that the workers having, if the workers were able to work Friday or Tuesday, they would qualify for the holiday pay. Having not worked Thursday, Friday, nor Tuesday, the company is claiming that there's no, they have not qualified for the holiday pay. We are saying they have not qualified because the company prevented them. Management refused to speak to the media, but Senator Spencer revealed their position. The company is saying that they are not paying and the industrial disputes tribunal must make a ruling on the matter. He also says the company had its own motives for locking out the workers. But the intent wasn't to allow the workers to work Friday nor Tuesday. Because if they had worked Friday and they had worked Tuesday, they would be entitled to the holiday pay on Monday. This being so, there is now a willingness on the part of the company for the workers to resume work Wednesday morning. Workers were in agreement with Senator Spencer's view. Indeed, everyone had something to say. They were sent an order barring them from entering separate premises last week Thursday. Separate management says the Industrial Disputes Tribunal should settle the matter and another meeting will be held at the Ministry of Labor at 2 p.m. tomorrow. The BITU, however, had the last word today. The company is in fact on strike. <laughs> the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago wants to have the last say in the interpretation of its laws. This was declared by the nation's Attorney General Keith Serbine, who was reacting to his government's anti-crime legislation. Tony Fraser reports. The Attorney General prosecuted his case against what he called the misconceptions about government's anti-crime legislation. The government, he told the crowd, is not merely reacting to the brutality of the day. It's a legislative program that has been months in the planning. He listed the Corporal Punishment Act. The bail bill to ensure that repeat offenders are not allowed the freedom to continue committing crime. And now the proposal to restrict and eventually replace the British Privy Council. In pursuing such a program, the Attorney General said the government is faced with an opposition concerned only with uh, the human rights of criminals. He made an argument against the relevance and affordability of the Privy Council. He said only 52 cases over the last eight years have been taken to that body. And he took on those who would oppose the replacement of the Privy Council with the Caribbean Court of Appeal. The laws of Trinidad and Tobago are the laws of an independent republic, Trinidad and Tobago. And it is not for the government of the UK or the Privy Council in the United Kingdom to determine what our laws do. Election fever is rising in Barbados as the nation gears up for the September 6th election. But a recent poll commissioned by the Democratic Labour Party was met with mixed reaction. Novelin Brewster explains. According to a senior DLP source, the poll conducted in mid-July was carried out by a team which included UWI sociologist Dr. Farley Bartwitt and psychologist Bert Thompson. 560 people were questioned, 47% of them men and 53% of them women. 33% were between 18 and 30 years old, 36% between 31 and 50 years old, and 30% over 51 years old. The official says those polled were drawn from all 28 constituencies and were questioned on such points as who they thought best able to lead the country, as well as issues such as economic policy, honesty, and integrity. The source says those polled were questioned about their preference for Prime Minister if Erskine Sandiford was no longer at the helm of the Democratic Labour Party. And according to the source, 30% of those polled preferred David Thompson as leader, 20% favoured Owen Arthur, and 9% wanted Dr. Richie Haynes. The remaining 41% couldn't say or were undecided, the DLP official told us. The source said the poll didn't look at the number of seats each party may win in the election. However, according to the source, the DLP is encouraged by the results, particularly since David Thompson is now at the helm of the party. Only last week, the DLP candidates contesting the election endorsed Thompson as their leader. Leader of the National Democratic Labour Party, Dr. Richie Haynes, couldn't be reached for comment, but NDP candidate Wendell McLean dismissed the poll as propaganda. While chairman of the BLP's Communications and Public Relations Committee, Peter Simmons, says his party reserves its comments on the poll. Journalists in Haiti are coming under pressure from the ruling regime. 
David Simmons tells us why. Leaving two Haitian colleagues behind them in prison, the three Americans left Haiti far from happy. Okay. We will be all right, but we're very concerned about all of you, the international press who has left here, about uh, the Haitian press, which is not sure just what the rules of the game are, and especially about our Haitian colleagues who have not yet been released, although there is some evidence that they may be released today. We think this is a message to the Haitian colleagues working with us, and it's a message to the international press, and we are very concerned about them and about the rest of you. The crew was accused of filming in a strategic area, in this case the airport, in breach of a recent government decree. The law is clearly designed to limit journalists' movements, and relations with Haiti's military are becoming increasingly strained. We don't have my permission to film. You heard? You skinhead, you heard? Stop that shit. Thank you. The three journalists were taken to the Dominican Republic for the journey home. They're the first to be deported since June, when Haiti ordered reporters to stay away from sensitive areas. Good luck, guys. Same to you. Thanks for everything, all of you. We'll take a look at the weather next. Stay tuned. Now, in Dominica, if you have a marketing TV, you've got simply the best. HBO Ole. Now for a look at the weather, valid up until 9 a.m. tomorrow. We can see some weak and disorganized tropical waves moving westerly across the tropical Atlantic. These are posing no threat to land at the moment, and no significant activities expected. Elsewhere across the Eastern Caribbean, generally fair weather. The tropical weather summary shows disorganized showers and thunder showers continuing over the western gulf of mexico surface pressures in that area have risen during the morning hours thus no development is expected elsewhere a few minor tropical waves continue move to move east to west across the tropical atlantic and the caribbean there's no sign of development being detected within this area of activity at this time Elsewhere, tropical storm development is not expected through Friday. Now for a look closer home at the area weather map. We can expect some isolated showers during the course of this evening and the early hours of tomorrow. But generally across Dominica, fair weather can be expected. The sun will rise tomorrow at 5.49. We can expect daytime highs of 31 degrees Celsius, 88 degrees Fahrenheit. Evening lows, 26 degrees Celsius, 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Barometric pressure, 1017 millibars. Winds will be from the east, southeast to east, northeast, gusting from between 15 to 25 knots. Waves will be about 7 to 9 feet. The weather concludes tonight's edition of the news. We thank you for viewing. Until tomorrow evening, good night. People really go bonkers when you say the system is out. So how do you think? Mr. Julius Thomas Corriet, Mr. Felix Francis, Mrs. Veronica Duran. Guide them, help them to work together for the good of all. Bless their plans on deliberation and bring them to success. Father, we ask this grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our parish priest, the local commissioner, McDonald Douglas, McDonald Douglas, McDonald Thomas, our parliamentary representative, Francois Barry, Mr. Masclem Frederick, our justice of the peace, fellow councillors, I have been given the distinguished honor and privilege to welcome you all here to the most beautiful part of this universe, 
which is called the Carib Territory. Obviously, I am not an impartial observer and I may tend to be biased. We are a rich, friendly, and blessed people. We are not rich in a mundane sense, in that we still do not have the luxury of fresh running water in our homes. Or you will not hear the hiss of pressure cookers as you drive by our modest wooden cottages. But we have a rich heritage, a unique and priceless culture, a history of which we as Caribs are very proud. The historians, the European historians, have been very unfair to us. And in, in that regard, it is my humble opinion that history should be rewritten to put the proper historical perspectives in its place so that we will no longer be considered or to have been stigmatized with the label as being hostile and warlike. Let me ask you a rhetorical question. If the Carib people in their collective wisdom decided that more land was required and attacked the city of Roseau, killing all and sundry, raping indiscriminately, robbing all the banks of their money, threatening to burn the city to the ground. Would you be hostile? Or would you be warlike? Or would you be both? In the event that the press is here and they seem to be here, let me re-emphasize and reiterate that I said it was a rhetorical question. I'm in no way trying to promote anarchy here. In contrast, when peaceful Catholic missionaries like Father Raymond Breton Labatt, Rochford, and others were here. The Caribs were a consummate host. So the moral of the story is this. If treated humanely, we are the most congenial and friendly people in this world. Ladies and gentlemen, this evening, you are our guests. Unfortunately, the councillors who have been elected are people of very modest means. And it appears that the government is just as broke as we are. So we have no funds to entertain you in the manner befitting of your stature. But what we offer is from the heart. And it is given in friendship and fellowship. There could be another long historical lesson here, but suffice to say that we are a beautiful people. We are a friendly people. So have a pleasant evening. Enjoy yourselves. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I leave rose. Daru. Daru. Swear. Swear. That I will. That I will. And well. And well. And faithfully discharge the duty. Faithfully discharge the duty. Of a member of, a, of the council. Of a member of the council. Of the Carib Reserve. Of the Carib Reserve. So help my God. So help me God.
I, Kelly Grano, do swear, do swear that I will, that I will, well and faithful, well and faithful, discharge the duties, discharge the duties of a member of the Carib Council, of a member of the Carib Council. So help my God. So help my God. Julius Thomas Corriet. I, Julius Thomas Corriet, do swear, do swear that I will well, that I will well, and faithfully discharge the duties, and faithfully discharge the duties of the member of the Carib Council. Of the member of the Carib Council. So help me God. So help me God. Miss <laughs> Verica, to run. Repeat after me. I, Verica Duran. I, Veronica Duran. Do swear. Do swear. That I will well. That, that I will well. And faithful discharge the duties. And faithful discharge the duties. Of a member of the Carib Council. Of a member of the Carib Council. Of the Carib Reserve. Of the Carib Reserve. So help me God. So help me God. I, Felix Francis. I, Felix Francis. Do swear. Do swear. That I will well. That I will well. And faithfully discharge the duties. And faithfully discharge the duties. Of a member of the Carib Council. Of the member of the Carib Council. Of the Carib Reserve. Of the Carib Reserve. So help me God. So help me God. Repeat after me. I, Alphonse Elvis Francis. I, Alphonse Elvis Francis. Do swear. Do swear. That I will well. That I will well. And faithful discharge the duties. And faithful discharge the duties. Of the member of the council. Of a member of the Carib Council. In the Carib Reserve. In the Carib Reserve. So help me God. So help me God. My dear people, 
Um, they asked me to be this, this afternoon's chairman. And as chairman, I will put the sash down. When I will be delivering my address, I will put the sash to represent the Carib people